So, we are going to try to go to Duna, and we are going to try to use the new uh, arrow breaking module. What I want to do first is I want to see, I want to see how it works. I've never used it before. We have unlocked, uh, no, we didn't unlock it. No, we didn't. We, there was way too many points, so never mind. Um, I mean, I suppose we could just, like, cheat ourselves a bunch of science to unlock it. I don't know. I don't know if that would be interesting to people or not. <laughs> yeah, search for more in the new system. I'll take a look at that. Loading it's a bit slow. I did just reload the game just to make sure that everything was 100% okay. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know why it's not loading now. We were fine a second ago. I can hear my hard drive ticking away though, so... Something must be loading. Maybe I'll need to refruit. Do it, do it, do it, no. I mean, it's not... We're not really improving... Yeah, okay, let me, let me restart this. Something's gone a little bit funny. Try that again. Mm -hmm. Just pretend you found a warehouse with some old uh, science boxes. Yeah, there you go. I like that logic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to see the new component. I mean, we could go into sandbox mode and test there, but I don't find sandbox mode as interesting. Yeah, we're going to unlock the new part. Because part of this is about showing you stuff. We got our career. I think it's good there. Make sure, you know, we can switch to, uh, say, our satellite over here. Just gonna make sure that that's looking okay. Yep, my little satellite. Boop, boop. Go back to the space center. And VAB. There we go. Everything's fine. Wrath of Cain, thanks for the resub. Okay. Oh, but first, yeah, let's go and unlock. Stuff. So we need um, we need 460 science. So, boop. Um, I guess 500 science. There. I'm just gonna unlock it. And then we'll get to play with new toys. Da -da -da -da. What was it? It was here. No. Heavy landing. This super heat shield. So all we're gonna unlock is a bunch of stuff we're not gonna use on this mission. Maybe we'll use the level two landing structs. But we're gonna unlock this part and see how it goes. So yeah, just bigger landing gear. It's hardly going to change our life. Um, so, let's see how it looks. And yes, I will type more. What does more give us? Oh, it's, it gives us more more struts and more boosters. Also lights, I guess because you do more lights. More lights, more struts, more boosters. Excellent, I love it. So, um, this heat shield. Well, let's, I don't know, let's, uh, let's, well, we're on a test. Let's say we're using the Mark 1-2 command pod, which fits three people. And, yeah, that'd be under here, wouldn't it? Okay, that's the size. And then when you deploy it. Well, I can't, oh, inflate. Woof! <laughs> that's great! I love it! So let's say, in theory, we're going to be trying to land with this thing. Um, we're also gonna have a bunch of science and stuff, right? So let's, we're, we're just making sort of a dummy little setup over here. Let's put the science on top. Because I don't think, if we grab, um, the service bay. You know, we can put that there and put that there. Can we put this in here and not have it be super silly? I mean, I guess I can do that. Actually, that's not terrible. So this is just, we're just, you know, testing here. So we got that, and we're going to have a goo caster. I guess I'll put it near the front, because why not? And then turn off the clipping, the barometer, and a thermometer. And for the sake of argument, we'll go ahead. We'll give it, like, a, one of the better antennas over there. So something like this. Oh, and we're probably not returning home to Kerbin with this bottom bit. So most likely, 
there will be, say, a 2.5 meter heat shield there, followed by our Rockamax. Right, so that, that's the sort of thing. Oh, but I guess we don't we wouldn't want to land with this thing underneath us either. So after we finish the arrow breaking, I guess we would go and detach this as well, wouldn't we? Hmm. Sound guy Ben, thanks for the sub. Does look awesome. Looks super awesome. What's the, um, here's an interesting question. I mean, it doesn't look like the sort of thing we want to land on, just based on the fact that it's sort of shaped oddly. Yeah, crash tolerance is six meters per second, which isn't unpossible, but certainly wouldn't be the greatest. Um, and for our parachutes, if we, so there's only one of the big size parachutes, and this is a regular parachute, not a drogue, and then we'd also want to put on uh, a certain number of drogue chutes. I'm gonna go like safe with like four of them, plus a couple more regular parachutes. And I don't actually know if that would actually be enough to safely land us on Mars. There, one more. That's a lot of parachutes, right? I don't know, something like that. And we'd want to split up the drogues. I, I won't bother now. The staging will be different regardless. Uh, is this in the... Uh... No, I think I have to manually. I don't think you can stage this, so I'm going to have to manually do this. HS jettison not staged. Oh! Oh, you can stage the jettisoning jettisoning of the heat shield. Oh, how cool is that? Which I guess we would be staging at some point. Okay. And then for our landing struts, we just, I don't know, put them... I want them on the outside of this service bay. Oh, why, are, why is this all, um, it looks like it's coming in upside down. Is it just me? No, 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 I guess that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. All right. So if we did that, and then shrank them in. All right, that might vaguely be. So, I mean, this is gonna be the Duna lander, but this is just a test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach some sort of engine underneath this. We're gonna pop this upwards, and then we're gonna let it drop and see what happens. I've never used this part. So we're gonna do one of those. Orange. Oh, orange finds everything that's orange. How great is that? We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna throw uh, uh, the skipper engine on there. Boom. Good. Done. Well enough. Just make sure it's got a pilot. We are, we're not going to be, we're going to be rewinding for this. We're going to sort of intentionally be killing some people. This is just a commuter simulation. So fire that, do that, and then we can't stage to deploy. I'm going to have to manually right click to deploy that. All right, let's, let's launch this and see what it looks like. You have several parachute issues right now. Oh yeah, probably, but this again, test little thing. So if we were to just launch straight up for a while, <laughs> Shouldn't top the drogue. That's fine. That's fine. Yep. But we have some normal parachutes too. Lots, lots of drogues. Lots of normal. We'll see how well it does to slow us down here. Um, on Mars, um, it's so thin that the parachutes won't slow us down as much. So we might still need some retro rockets or something. I should use the mainsail to get up here a little bit faster. All right, I'm gonna call that good enough. I'm just gonna kill the engine. I'm gonna stage. What? Did it stage the wrong thing? Oh, no, no, okay, it's just because of that shroud there. Okay. And we're gonna inflate. Try to stay facing retrograde. It's because of the air resistance that actually can't. We'd have had to come in a little bit better in the first place. 
Can I tell you to try going pro grade? <laughs> let me uh, let me try it with a uh, a bigger booster to get us up a little higher first. I'm just gonna replace that with the um, the mainsail. Oh, um. Oh, we might have run out of electric charge. That's actually something I hadn't considered in this in this little test. We'll expand that out. Yeah, we'll throw some solar panels on here. We might want some batteries as well. Actually, that's probably a really good idea. This is why we're testing. Uh, oh, I don't have the big one because that's the little one still. So I guess what we'll do is we'll use the Z400s here. And I covered up my hatch. It's not what I meant to do. There we go couple of Z400s there and there. Not even evenly placed. I tell you what, what I'll do is I'll remove that. I'll go into snap. You're going to go into radial symmetry. Oh, but yeah, it's not radial symmetry in where I want it to be. Never mind then. We'll just eyeball it. And what I can do is when we separate here, I can throw on... Oh, I don't have little separatrons. That's another tech. I was going to say, we can throw on some little separatrons here. Or what I can do is throw on just a couple of fins. I just want a little bit of aerodynamic forces that'll help, like, drag this away from the main body. Give us a little bit of space. Something like that. Okay. So, again, this is just a test. We're going we're gonna to just let her rip, and then we're going to revert after that. Let's see what happens. Mm-mm. Yeah, Separatrons would help, but we don't have them. Okay, so we're going to take off a little faster. Too fast. We're going to hit some, like, air resistance quite quickly, but that's okay. Just going to get some amount of altitude. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get us to start going down first. I think I deployed when we're still on the way up, which led to a little bit of weirdness. So we're going to be trying to move downwards first. Or something. Might even be better if we go a little bit sideways. We might end up doing a little bit of uncontrollable flipping here, but let's see what happens. I probably should have actually started a regular um, gravity turn. Alright, I'm going to call that... Uh, that's fine. You, go away. Interest so, I think our top stage has more drag than the bottom stage. That's why we're staying stuck together. There we go. Let's let's split off over here. All right, you're going to face yourself retrograde. Right now, we are still going up. So, retrograde is up right now. So, I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm going to wait until we've sort of like... Are we actually going to leave the atmosphere? No. Almost, but not quite leave the atmosphere. So, let me go and... Um, physics warp until we start coming down and then we're going to deploy this thing and see how that feels mm -hmm. we're using a little bit of electric charge holding this but that shouldn't be too bad so now we have peaked and we're about to start coming down and I'm told my pilot to hold retrograde so he's just going to keep this end facing downwards and I'm just going to wait until we've got a little bit oh yeah surface retrograde is what we need Okay, now we're starting to come down 500 meters per second. Let's inflate. Froomp. And we're still increasing our speed, but we're in very thin atmosphere. So the question will be, once we start to hit some thicker atmosphere, what's going to happen with that? Is it going to start slowing us down as is? And probably what we'll want to do is open our parachutes before... Actually, we're going so slow we could open all the parachutes now, which is interesting. These should, some of these should be red. Why would you say it's safe to deploy? We're going at 500 meters per second. Oh, because there's not that much uh, air pressure right now. That is very true. I mean, we can deploy... Oh, look, our speed is going down. Our speed is going down. This is acting very much like a parachute. It's bleeding off a ton of our speed. 
Ah, yeah. Oh, this is the greatest new part. Look at this. Look how slow it's going. We're not even very thick atmosphere. This is like a turbo parachute in addition to being a giant heat shield. Oh, this is going to be great for landing on Duna. So then the idea is at some point, what we do is we deploy all our regular parachutes. Oh, which currently aren't deploying because of air pressure. Right, that's, that's fine. Physics warp, there we go. Now they're starting to deploy. Um, so now we don't need the heat shield anymore. So now I can do the next stage, which is going to be to drop that out. And right now, it's still acting as a better parachute than everything, so it's still currently being stuck to us, even though it is technically separated away. At some point, our other parachutes will start to be useful. Look how slow we're going, and it's almost exclusively thanks to this thing. Now, at some point, our other parachutes will start to slow us down more than this thing is slowing us. Right now, the, the slowdown we're experiencing is mostly because we're still pressing against this, um, the drag from the, the, the heat shield. I suppose I could have de-inflated it first, but now I can't do anything because it's not it's not attached to my ship. Physics warp. And yeah, at some point, and I don't even need SAS, I'll turn it off. Oh yeah, that that when I turned off the SAS, we did start to tumble, and as a result, it did smack into something. But uh, it means I'm not going to be able to test my uh, landing gear. But that's fine. This is the way it was supposed to work. Amazing! Okay. Okay. We have figured out, more or less, how that part is supposed to work. We're going to have to be a little careful splitting off. It would be nice if we had um, separatrons, but we don't. I'm thinking we don't need all these drogue shoots. We have a drogue, and the other thing's going to act as a giant drogue shoot. So I think I'm going to have one drogue shoot here, and then I'm just going to go nuts on the normal parachutes. So four there. Six. Oh, there we go. And oh, right, I still had the old one left on there. Cool. Very cool. I like it. Yes, Duna Atmosphere is thinner um, than Kerbal, but it seems like... we I don't even know if we need any drogue shoot anymore. It feels like the bottom heat shield is effectively going to be our drogue, um, and then we'll slow down with the rest. We might still want some amount of fuel for a little bit of retro burn just to finish off the landing. But that does mean a lot of extra weight. You can lo lo land with just shoots. You'll notice at this point, we're not planning any way to get back home. I think we're sending three Kerbals to just live on a Duna permanently, actually. So we'd have to equip a bunch of engines and things, which could be possible. Alternatively, so if they're not coming home, we don't need that or this heat shield. Sure, let's just leave them there forever. <laughs> we will give them a mobile processing lab. And actually, that makes it a little easier. To do that. At these legs. And do that. Watch this not be enough parachutes. Just cover it with more and more and more parachutes. Infinity parachutes. Yeah, or could we just drop a rover? But if we just land these guys on Mars permanently with a research lab, they will generate so much science for us over time. I like that. I like the idea of this being the thing that just parks itself on Mars Forevers. Obviously, they'll need solar panels. It's got a little bit of battery, which is good, so that in case we're landing on the dark side, we don't run out of power. Um, these, because we want to be able to um, stow them afterwards. A 
couple more over there. We're not covering the hatch. Um, maybe ladders. Say here. Oops. Let's grab the rotate tool. Because there's a ladder over there. Oh, you know what? We don't need a ladder here. Um, because people will just be able to come in and out from that hatch, and that will be perfectly sufficient. I suppose there's a chance... Oh, and we had the um, mirror symmetry. Chance we'll need that to get to the ground. I'll probably poke into the ground. Oh, no, not quite. Good. That's all right. I suppose what I could do... is rotate things to align here better. Um, what do I do? Turn off the snap and then I can rotate in smaller chunks? No, I guess I just have to use the rotate tool, don't I? That's not what I meant to grab. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Because then what I can do is grab this ladder, drop it here, and maybe we'll bulge it out just a little bit, just in case. Although I'm not 100% confident that we'll be able to climb up this. I guess we might want to run a test. If I do something like that, we'll be able to climb all the way up and down. Save. Uh, let me just grab some support over here. Let's just see if we can climb. There's a hatch on the other side. Yeah, there's a hatch on the other side of the science lab, but we have to make sure they're they're all aligned. Is there another? There's not another hatch on the top of this thing, though, right? Pretty sure there's just one, because the science bay has two. So if we go and EVA with uh, Bill over here, if I accidentally kill Bill, we're just gonna <laughs> reload it. This is a simulation. Can we climb all the way up and down here without accidentally detaching? Oh yes. Yes, indeed. Beautiful. And yeah, if we look at Bill over here, and let's say we board the bottom part, and you can transfer internally. If we board there, and then I ask you, Bill, could you please EVA? Out of curiosity, which side would you do it from? Ah, there we go, good, this side. Okay, that's all right. Let's go and uh, revert. Kill Bill, volume one. So we can go and tuck this ladder in for now. So, I mean, we have, I think, all the science we need. We've got that. This does need a lot of power. Um, I'm not 100% convinced that we've got enough solar power panels. Um, so let's go ahead and just double this up. There we go. They might occlude each other. And then we've got a couple more on the top. I suppose we could save weight by not bringing this. There's uh, lighter capsules. But I like the shape of it. I don't know. It looks cool, right? So... I think this is what we're going to Duna with. Now, how are we going to get there? We can certainly get a lot more Delta V if we um, if we use nuclear engines. Nuclear engines also have the benefit that they only need liquid fuel tanks. I believe the largest liquid fuel tank we have right now is this guy over here, which is a Mark One. I guess it's fine. Also got Mark Zeros, but we don't want that. I mean, I could just bring one of these big ones and take out the oxidizer to save weight and just use it as a giant liquid tank, but I'm not sure that's a big win. Yeah, nuclear engine's cool. Don't forget lights. Oh, thank you. Yes. Let's put on the lights right now before I forget them. Use the Mark IIs. They're a little bit bigger, and everyone knows that bigger is shinier. So I'm going to offset them right over here, like that. There we go, it'll illuminate a little bit of our ship, which makes it easier to see in space, and also probably shine down on the ground to assist with our landing. Add a decoupler between the lab and the heat shield. Uh, we don't need to, it's actually got its own built-in um, jettisoning stage. It should decouple itself. And I guess we can test that. 
Let's test it, make sure that things are working exactly as we expect. If we do this, and launch this. And you can add it to a stage, but I could also, oh yeah, it doesn't scroll the same way. If I just right click here and say jettison, there we go. See that? And then we can deploy the landing gear, which actually don't have to be, they could be planted higher up now. Oh yeah. So we get a little bit more stability. As not enough parachutes land, I do note that way, you need to do a powered land. That does not surprise me. So I think I am going to leave in um, the room under here. I'm going to throw in, say, this Rocco Mac tanks. I guess we can get rid of these. And throw in some thud engines. Like that. And we'll need a little bit more clearance. Eh, not that much. Somewhere around there. Uh, so the question is, this bit here, how heavy is it? This is 18 tons. What is, so Kerbal, Duna. What is the force of gravity on Duna? Um, come on. Uh, 2.94 meters per second. So, if we go 18 tons times 2.94 meters per second, that means that the force of the effective sort of thrust that gravity is supplying on Duna is 52 kilonewtons, almost 53 kilonewtons. So the question is, are thuds here, how powerful are they? Our thuds have a max thrust of, oh my god, 108 kilonewtons? And we got four of them? So, like, 108 times 4 divided by that 18 times 2.94 means that we'd have a thrust to rate ratio right now of 8. Seems kind of overkillish to me. We could cut that in half and actually save some launch weight doing this. So, two of them. So, now we should have a thrust to weight ratio of... So, now we're at 16.2 tons. times two. So a thrust to weight ratio of 4.5, which should be fine. I mean, as long as it's a thrust to weight ratio of over one, then that will mean we'll be slowing down with this. And this means we'll slow down a fair bit. And we don't need, we probably need less than one uh, being assisted by the parachutes to do this. But overall, this should give us what we need. We don't have a lot of fuel in here. It's not going to be a very long burn, but hopefully, I don't know. Do to do. So we're going to do this. We're going to hope that this is enough to do the final burn. Maybe we'll just smack into Duna. We don't know. Uh, without some mods to let us like simulate what it would be like landing another planet, we actually can't do the math here in Kerbal. So we'll just hope. What could possibly go wrong? All right, we got to get this thing um, over there. So we might not have to do the... Um, since we're going to do a fair bit of arrow breaking, we might not have to worry about... Um, being super duper mega fuel efficient. We might be able to just grab like one of these giant tanks and throw on um, the the poodle engine. And that might be plenty of Delta V to get us to Duna. I suspect it probably is. And then we just have to get this freaking thing into space. Um, which I suppose you know, if we went like four radial decouplers this is going to be insane. And this, I have no idea. It's so disorienting not to do this without DV calculations. It would be nice if it got added to the game at some point. Um, actually, let's use, not that one. Uh, I think this one is bigger, first of all. It is. I, sometimes I like the one that's a little bit more spaced out. But no, this will probably be okay. Like that. Definitely need a big nose cone on there. Um, oh, we don't want four-way symmetry for this. We want paired symmetry so that we can do asparagus staging. Do, do, do. We want the big... It's not so asparagus-y exactly, but... They're not quite level. You come up a little more. There we go. We're gonna go and split you guys up. Who's on the outside? 
these two are on the outside. So we can do something like that. And for the sake of our argument, I'll go ahead and link to the middle. But that's not really what it's planning. We're planning on launching the four outside ones, jettisoning, jettison, start the middle. But we could always manually start the middle up and see. I have no idea. Oh my god, it's weird doing this in a vacuum. How much delta V this is going to generate. It's pretty level. It's leveled-ish. Shut up, it's fine. <laughs> uh, oh, this is too heavy right now. But 226 tons. Now, we've got to change our math for um, for Kerbal. So it's 226 point, what, four tons? I guess at that point it doesn't really matter. Times 9.8. That is the downward force. And these mainsails have 1379 kilonewtons at atmospheric level. So it's 1379 times four divided by that downwards thrust gives us a thrust to weight ratio of 2.48. Well, that's not bad. I don't know what our uh, what our delta V is. We could easily run out of fuel well before we get to our goal. Uh, but we can save a fair bit of delta V by just, you know, the fact that, again, we are aero braking. This will get us off the ground. Whether it will get us to Duna? Mm. <laughs> uh, since we have extra delta V, we could go ahead and just add more fuel at this point. Um, because... Or, sorry, since we have an ex extra thrust to weight, it means we can haul more fuel into space uh, at this point, and that wouldn't be too bad. So I could just extend this a little bit, and that might be the way to do it. I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to grab sort of a medium-sized tank of this size. So if we did this, and I still need to add struts, but struts are light, so it's not really going to change the math. If I did this... What are we at now? 298.4 tons. 298.4 tons gives us a thrust weight of 1.8. So we're still going up. Now, this is not as efficient as just adding more staging, but it's not bad. Let, what, let's see what happens. What's the worst that could possibly happen? I'm gonna strut this bad boy up in every way possible. That and that. That and that. Some of that. So, whoops. That, thru that strut is still technically attached somewhere, but that's fine. So we get extra struts. We're going to strut our stuff. And from here to... Probably around there. I know it's like a little crooked, but I'm trying to give room for the uh, solar panels to extend, just to say. All right. Did we give this a try? I mean, we can't launch it right now because it's it's too heavy. We're gonna have to go and upgrade our um, our VAB. Uh, oh, every now and again, it can decide that the symmetry works slightly differently than how you expected it. There we go. That's how I want that symmetry to work. Thank you. And I want that to work that way. Lovely. And we're gonna make sure. Oh, oh, these drag better. Oh, they they fixed that. It used to be really annoying. You had to sort of expand a group before you dragged it. Now you don't have to. Oh, just a lovely little change. They're not struts, it's space tape, yeah. Uh, so, we've got to go and level up our VAB. We have money, though. Oh, that's a lot of money. Oh, no, it wasn't the VAB. Oh, crap, it was this. Hang on, I might have to uh, go come back to our quick load here, our quick save. No, we have enough money. Okay. I was worried that I'd, I'd spent too much money that I wouldn't be able to afford the actual spaceship because I upgraded the wrong thing. We weren't, uh, you upgraded the VAB when you hit a part limit. We didn't hit a part limit, we hit a, a weight limit. It's only 91 parts, it's not that much. I mean, we still want to upgrade this thing at some point. So that's okay. Uh, do we want to set action groups and stuff? I don't think we need action groups. Let's take a look. We've got da 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 da, followed by that, followed by that, followed by ba ba. Followed by, yeah, we gotta make sure not to accidentally stage this because we have to manually deploy the heat shield first at some point. Followed by, this staging is all kind of silly. There we go. So it's gonna be our drogue chute, followed by our conventional chutes, followed by our retro engines, which will probably, you know, start at some point earlier. But it's important for us to not accidentally stage into this. We'll have to manually deploy the, the thing. But we can do that from space, actually. We don't have to wait until we enter the atmosphere. We can manually deploy our heat shield from space as we're coming in. Antenna? Oh, yeah, you're right. 
Uh, I thought it did. No, that was in an earlier thing. I said it didn't. Oh, no, right here. There we go. Uh, it's a little bit in a bad spot. Let's go and move it. But yeah, we do have an antenna, which is good. Because we're never bringing home this science. What we're going to be doing is we're going to throwing it into the mobile processing lab. And we're going to process the hell out of it and generate tons of science. And then we will transmit some of it. So we'll lose some potential by transmitting. But we're going to gain a lot by just processing it. And then we don't have to worry about bringing any of this stuff home. It's a one-way trip. Uh, don't you want to fire the central engine with the others? No. This one here is very inefficient in the atmosphere. It would be a waste of fuel to fire this one. And it's not like I need the extra thrust to wait. Yeah, the center engine for space, says Ken Ken. Do we just try it? Is the intent to return this lander from Duna? Nope. These people are going to live there forever. So, Bill Kerman engineer, Valentina Kerman pilot, and... Oh yeah, that's right. We accidentally killed our, our scientist through, like, in-between episode stuff. That wasn't supposed to stick around. It was just me derping around. And apparently I accidentally saved. Uh, so we need a new scientist. Oh, we need two scientists to work the uh, the science thing. So Julian and Wildon over here, welcome to the party. Oh, you're a low XP. We almost have to run a mission with the scientists first to give them a couple of ticks of experience points because right now they're going to process the science at glacial, glacial rates. I think we need to do a training mission first, guys. Oh, there goes the rest of my money. Um, I think what we need to do is... Um, we need to finish a mission. But yeah, we have to do a training mission. A cheap ship. And we're going to do the sun flyby right now. That's what we're going to do. Easy peasy.